Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Friday, March the 8th. Another consolidation day yesterday. Uh, market slightly up. Uh, Dow up 33, S&P up 2, NASDAQ up 11, dollar down as we would expect. And of course, gold did not follow through from the previous day, down 5. Um, so it looks like the markets are waiting for non-farm payroll numbers today that's coming out at 8.30. And I do think that is an important number. Usually starts to dictate where the trend would be for the next few weeks. Um, and I do think that the markets are probably paused to test the S&P cash level of 15.50, 15.55. We're just going to see. We're almost there now. Um, as as for last night, we interesting developments. We did have China trade data come out, which is really important to be uh, um, uh, watching what China's economy is doing. Uh, started coming out, they they, uh, they said a whole lot better than expected. The trade data came out, but if you really look at it, imports fell off quite a bit, and that's that should be concerning to investors and traders. And I know it would be for me. Um, now, I'm not a longer-term guy, but I uh, definitely uh, want to see any red flags, and we have one here. Drop-off in uh, imports was multi-month lows, uh, and I think that's a reflective on, the, uh, on China's uh, health. Uh, may not be as good as people think. So any signs of slowing out of China will likely put a drag on the global economy, and I mentioned that several months back. Although China is a big manipulator of their, uh, of their economic data, so uh, we could say this all day long to a blue in the face, and if they don't uh, come clean to their numbers, there's nothing really you can do about it. So right now it's just, it's just hearsay, but you really need to know. And if, if the export numbers were, so, export numbers were solid um, and then we have a huge miss on imports, that's a big reading, and that, that, that can have a negative impact in the near future so if somebody at least um, looking at those numbers you really look at it if they're not importing their goods their their economy is totally slowing down so that's something really to think about although our futures right now are up four handles so it looks like uh, they're not really paying attention to what they're importing they're paying attention to what they're exporting so and that's fine and that's what we want to look at as traders is, is how the reaction to those numbers are it doesn't matter what we think it's how the masses think of what those numbers are and if they think of it as good so we have to look at it as a bullish bias for the day at least for for before 8 30. Let's take a look at it. a couple of things. S and P S and P 500, um, their seasonal strength. I started looking at the uh, the almanac, and their seasonal strength is ending. S and P 500. Um, if you look at the Russell and the transports, we they, they have joined the Dow, making new highs. Nasdaq and S and P did not. So we have a little bit of market divergence in here. Uh, and again, that could be just for another day or two. Nothing really tradable, but you definitely want to know about that. All right. So we have continuing claims. Um, uh, yesterday that weren't too bad. Today's going to be non-farm payroll numbers coming out at 8.30. That's going to definitely be a market mover, so I would uh, definitely uh, keep an eye on that. We did have gold did not follow through, although we do have um, the oil sector, the XLE or the USO, whichever you follow, um, really starting to pick up some steam here, so we might have a trade coming in in, uh, in the oil sector soon. Gold still needs to be uh, watched closely. Apple did uh, bounce yesterday, so that might be another sign. Maybe we might have a tradable bottom in Apple. Um, it's funny that I said that. Uh, usually I haven't said that in the last uh, several months, but we may have a tradable bottom in Apple. We'll just need to really see. It needs more evidence, though, that we're carving out some sort of a... Um, uh, a bottom here in Apple, but we'll look at that in the charts. So let's let's go right to it now. Let's take a look at our NIMO. Really boring the last couple of months. We're still up here. Really, really small change. Up 573 on the day. So we have plenty of room to run to the upside and or downside. So really, nothing really has changed here. Um, let's take a look at copper. Copper continues to lag the markets, and this is not good. It is an industrial metal. Manufacturing tells you about signs of of, of a growth, and uh, we're not getting it here. So this is this is really interesting. We're still diverging from what the markets are doing. The markets have been up every day this week, uh, and copper. Copper has been down almost every day this week, so that is a big, big red sign. Unless copper really starts to pick up and break above the 200-day moving average, guys, I would say take this as a really, really red flag here, especially for the longer-term uh, investor and the swing trader or position trader. You know, the day trader, we can react to it during the course of the trading day. All right, uh, let's take a look at the dollar. And I did mention the dollar is overbought and looking to come in. Dollar had a big down day yesterday, pushed all of the risk-correlated assets up. So a lot of the currencies are up, as you can see. Uh, the New Zealand dollar, the Aussie dollar, the Canadian dollar. 
our commodity block currencies, high yielding currencies have uh, caught a bit again. And that's to be expected. And that's fine. It's going to create a better shorting opportunity um, down the road if you're looking at it. Um, and also with the yen pairs, if you're looking at the yen pairs, the yen pairs have gotten decimated. Um, Japan started talking that uh, that they're going to be coming out of recession in Q4, uh, their Q4. So we'll see what happens. But nonetheless, markets have literally have exhausted themselves to the upside. It's going to be interesting to see if this market can continue to go up higher like this. I personally, would every time the market's up at these lofty levels, I am totally risk off waiting for the market to pull in and or to roll over. And if we have signs that we have a, a tradable top in place, I will be uh, very aggressive to the short side, at least for that market correction and or pullback. We'll see what happens. Uh, only time will tell. But again, guys, U.S. dollar down, so that's going to put a bid into equities. That's why when I said yesterday, what, look at look the dollar to flag somewhere in here and make a higher low. Probably catch the 20-day moving average and then start to really gain momentum. And that would really hinder on any type of... Um, of uh, risk on um, trade here in a coming session. So it's going to be see, interesting to see what happens in the coming days. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX totally collapsed again. Um, and we talked about that outside day Bollinger Band. That's a buy signal for the market, sell signal for the VIX. And as you can see here, we just literally just collapsed. No volatility. We've had um, a couple calls when the volatility picked up saying, oh, you know, you're still not doing much. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing much because there's nothing to do. Uh, very quiet out there. Very quiet. Intraday trades, you have six and a half hours to trade. So you need to keep your, um, your trades to a minimum when there's no volatility. Uh, there's nothing. Uh, earnings season has passed us. And that's a big, uh, big, a big gauge of volatility for at least for me, um, looking for uh, for trades uh, that uh, uh, companies have posted, you know, good or bad earnings, um, and that actually puts in volatility to that share. So it's it's nice to see when the mark, when it, when the stock's moving. But when we have no movement here, uh, and you're a, a, a day trader, intraday trader that's looking for you know to trade for income, you have to really be tight on uh, on what you're looking at and really trade the best setups until the market really starts to move again. Right now, we're just grinding up, 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 and we haven't really been doing much. So um, keep the pallets dry, guys. There's going to be plenty of opportunity to come in the coming weeks. So that's for sure. Um, XLE, let's take a look at that. I mentioned that XLE had um, starting to pick up a little bit of steam here. And as you can see, we are now consolidating up here. Take a look at that uh, bullish percent ENER. We, we had a buy signal yesterday. On the bullish percent ENEO. Now, I like to see a buy signal better down here, obviously at the uh, 50 60 area. Uh, but nonetheless, anything really overboard is going to be above 90, all right? Uh, 90, um, 85, 90, 95. Uh, so we do have a little bit of room to run. And if uh, XLE can take out the 79 here, then I get to, we have at least a breakout for a temporary uh, move higher. But we need the volume to improve. Look at the volume really really dismal so I'll be watching for uh, some of the um, uh, oil trades for next week that'll be on my watch list take a look at gold GDX and the Bollinger Bands we did not get a buy signal in the um, uh, BP uh, gold miners index right we did not get that as of yet we're still holding down at the at, at the low five now this is where I'd like to get long gold when once we get that big push up there'll be plenty of time to get long the GDX that's why I said one day does not make a trend and sure enough it doesn't and we also our ratio G GDX GLD ratio we did not break above the um, the uh, 20 EMA so we really need to really break above here and we need um, price to start moving higher making higher highs and higher lows otherwise for the day you could have bought it but to hold for a swing trade um, it really isn't worth it, at least not yet. All right, let's run into the charts. Now, let's take a look at USL real quick before we start doing our uh, index analysis. And as you can see here, the USL, um, unlike the G, um, the XLE, again, had a, had a two-day bounce, broke out of this four-day consolidation pattern here. So let's see what happens that if we can get a little bit more movement to the upside. But I think oil may be, and, and the GDX, uh, may be uh, a poise for a nice little trade, a long trade in the coming days and weeks. But we'll just see what happens here. We still need to curl back up. Stochastic needs to break above 20, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the MACD here, as you can see. All right, let's take a look at um, the GDX again. And again, here is my... Um, basic um, hypoth uh, th uh, theory, so to speak, um, in this possible maybe inverted head and shoulders. But again, we haven't even moved up here yet, so this still needs a lot of work to do in the GDX. Okay, and this is just why I want to show you the last five trading sessions since last 30. We gap lower, held this area um, on Thursday, 
on Mon I'm, excuse me, excuse me on, on, uh, on Friday, Monday we came right in here, consolidated, one day push up, three day consolidation. So it's just been dismal for the day trader, guys, really has been quiet. Um, looking for volatility intraday has been uh, nerve wracking to be quite honest. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, when, the, when markets have inside days telling you there's no new order flow, you should not be trading actively. You should be taking a step back, let the trades fall into your lap basically until um, this market can pick up some volatility here. Okay, take a look at the spiders daily chart. Uh, continue to grind higher on ever so slightly volume. Uh, volume has been really dismal the last week, uh, but the markets continue to grind higher, guys. So we are about two and a half points away from the uh, spiders all-time high, and I will show that to you on Monday when we do our longer-term bigger picture. Um, spider 60-minute. Now you can see here what's happening. We have a little bit of divergence on a 60-minute chart, and we're at resistance. I think if the market gaps today higher and starts to reverse at the end of the day, we may have a sell signal in place, at least for the short term. We shall see. Um, right now, it hasn't happened. Again, it's just my theory, but if the markets do gap higher, test that 1550, 1555 in the S&P cash. Um, with, with the S&P on a 60-minute chart diverging, uh, this could give us a sell signal here. So again, divergence in itself is not a sell signal. We need to see price move lower. Take a look at our Bollinger Band Spider 30-minute chart tightening last three days so there is a big move coming and more than likely it's going to be the non-farm payroll data coming out and that's going to push this market one way or the other let's just see what happens here it's going to be very interesting in this session this morning all right s p 500 daily cash as you can see here 1550 next resistance 1530 support 1495 is your next big support area our first target when we do break lower will be the 1475 area 60 minute on our bolt on our um uh, Fibonacci retracement still really holding true. The 38.2% uh, to 50% will be the first real pullback in the market when this does happen. Uh, but we'll just see what happens. We'll just take it one step at a time. And look at our uh, MACD and our stochastics on our 60 minute. Here's our RSI telling you that we are diverging from price. So interesting to see uh, what developments will occur in the next couple of days. IYT weaker yesterday. Really interesting to see um, NASDAQ up, uh, Dow up. And um, uh, transports actually started selling off a little bit, made a lower low from the previous day. So that's interesting. And that's a leader, guys. Um, Russell, uh, another one of our leaders, did manage to get green yesterday on low volume. Okay, And as you can see here, this move here unwound some of our overbought readings. And sure enough, right back to overbought again. So two days down, five, six days up, and we're overbought again. So there is no fear in the market. That's what scares me. There is absolutely no fear. Any dips are being bought, and the dip buyers are being rewarded right now. But what's happening is you're, it's catching a lot of retail long up in these areas. And when the retail public gets in at these levels and these, and these heavy resistance areas, to me, that's a, that's a big sign that this market is, is going to get caught to the wrong side. Now, when that happens, um, all of these retail guys are going to start to move, and they're going to start to get, uh, get, out of this, uh, get out of their long position. And once that happens, you're going to have the floodgates open. And again, it might ha not happen for weeks and weeks and months, but it's just interesting to see that there's no fear up at these levels. And, and for me, being more of a short-term guy anyway, um, I just said uh, just, just really kind of putting it out there for the longer-term guy. You know, use protection, uh, buy puts. They're very, very cheap, and or if not, at least tighten your stops. Get ready to take some profits, at least take something off the table if you're long from down here or, um, you know, the uh, November lows. Or if you're even just a longer-term guy uh, and you're going to ride it out, then really you shouldn't do, really should be doing nothing. Um, take a look at the XLF. As you can see, back into this upper end of this bearish rising wedge. And we are here now. And as you look at this, gap up, gap up, low volume. And we're back into this overbought area. We are not fully overbought yet, so XLF can actually break out of this wedge. And like I said, this is going to be interesting in the coming months to short. Um, I don't think that this is an opportunity to get short the banks as of yet. Um, looking at some of the banking index, the regional banks, they're actually very, very strong. So um, I would not be looking to short the banks as of yet. This is a watch list sector that I'm looking at in the coming months to look to get short. Okay, but as of right now, and it's going to be interesting to see about the budget cuts. That's going to really hinder on this banking sector in the coming months. Take a look at Apple, and lastly will be the Qs. As you can see here, we're kind of carving out a bottom here. And this is a nice little, this is a heavy 
um, um, support area. So if Apple can hold the 420, now if Apple does not hold the 420 and we close below and close like at 418 on a closing basis and the next day we get follow through and take out that low, I think all bets will be off to the, to the upside and Apple will see the low 400s really, really quick. So for a trade, um, Apple here, uh, your stop's going to be about 418, uh, and your uh, your upside target really will be the 20-day moving average at 450, and then you would need to reevaluate it. But right now, uh, looking a little bit better, at least uh, we did get a bounce yesterday, so we'll see in the coming days. And the Qs, lastly, the Qs, as you can see here, um, we're just sitting above the upper end of support, which was resistance, and we're just consolidating. So again, a couple of uh, some bullish signs here that the um, Qs are starting to um, uh, really wake up a little bit, but we'll see. Um, guys, today non-farm pay will be very careful today. Uh, there is going to be some uh, some opportunity, I would assume, unless the non-farm payrolls, they come in line and there's no change, then the markets will just generally prob probably drift higher and that's what you get on Fridays when there's really no data to really push these markets or no surprise data actually the markets will tend to drift higher so be careful being short here today have a great day everybody have a big report coming out on Monday enjoy the weekend